Okay, let's look at a problem that deals with conservation of energy. So imagine that you have a skateboarder, and we have a lot of people in our class who like to skateboard. I have a skateboard going into a really cool, wicked ramp um, at 6.5 meters per second. So she's going in purely horizontally, and she's gonna go shooting straight vertically up this ramp and do some fancy stuff at the top. But as she leaves the ramp, she's going 4.1 meters per second. The question is, how high is the ramp? All right, we can look at this in terms of conservation of energy. So when we explored how to solve a conservation of energy problem, we talked about looking at when is the initial and when is the final. And so the initial, the first time point we're gonna be looking at is when she goes into the ramp. And the second time we're gonna be looking at is when she leaves the ramp. All right, so those are our initial and final time points. So we remember that the total energy of the system at the beginning, our initial, has to equal the total energy of the system at the end. And that total energy is made up of our mechanical energy in the system. And in this case, we have both potential and kinetic energy that we want to think about. So our initial potential plus our initial kinetic energy is going to equal our final potential plus our final kinetic energy. Now, whenever we're dealing with potential energy, of course, we have to look at a reference value, a height of zero, and we get to set that, um, sort of the power of physics, right? So where might we set our height of zero? Well, we want to make it so it's easy. And a lot of times, strategically, we want to knock out one of the variables that we have to solve for. So if I make my height equal to zero when she enters the ramp, then her initial potential energy is zero. And that value conveniently goes away. So we always wanna to try to be strategic about where we place that reference value of zero. All right, so we are left with the initial kinetic, one half the mass times her initial speed squared, is going to equal our final potential, mass, times g times the final height, plus our final kinetic, one-half mass, times the final speed squared. And now it just becomes a matter of using the information that was provided in the problem. We're interested in this final height. How high is that ramp? So when she leaves the ramp. So we have one-half her mass. Oh, I wasn't given her mass, so we'll leave it as an M, and we'll see what happens. Times her initial velocity of 6.5 squared equals, again, her mass times 9.8 times this final height that we don't know, plus one-half her mass times 4.1 squared. Now, what do we notice about that mass that I wasn't given? Well, it's in every term. And when something's in every term, if I divide by that variable, it goes away. So if I divide all sides by m, the m, which is in every term, will disappear. So divide by one, so it's multiplied by one. And we're left with 1 half times 6.5 squared. That's 21. 0.125 is equal to 9.8 times my final height plus 1 half times 4.1 squared, which is 8.405. I bring 8.405 to the other side, and I get 12. 0.72 equals 9.8 times the final height, and I divide by 9.8, and I get a height equal to 1.3 meters. All right, well, maybe it wasn't as wicked of a jump as I said at the beginning. So her final height coming off that rather little jump is 1.3 meters. So using conservation of energy, we can really be slick and make things very quick. We have to identify that initial and final, that's key. And then recognizing where our, um, it's strategic to place our potential energy reference height of zero. 
and then utilize our knowledge of mechanical energy. Good job.